Hello, everybody. Um, we are so overwhelmed with um, joy that we have this fantastic panel of awesome, awesome ladies um, that are going to be sharing their stories um, with us. I know we, as we're going in, um, so far we have um, you know about 50 people in the room. But we're going to uh, that's going to increase as we go along. So just as a you know, just giving you a little bit of detail, the reason we're doing this is just because um, I felt that you know for Women's Month, as we end of Women's Month here in South Africa, it's we're wanting to just celebrate and give advice, even if you know you li don't listen to someone's advice, what to do when you've gotten into some sort of a position that you weren't supposed to. Um, and how do you get yourself out? So everyone's got a different perspective of what they're going to be sharing. There's um, not a specific format. You know, it's just each woman that um, I admire. Um, I mean, like, there's so many. We just didn't have enough time. I mean, I was complained to um, earlier this morning in another webinar. Well, why didn't you? I said, because you were doing one webinar. So, you know, didn't want to inundate. But um, I'm really grateful for each one taking the time out today to share your story and some advice on that not necessarily the whole story but share your advice um, that pertains to whatever you feel that is needed um, so thank you everybody um, for joining us i'm going to now just do the uh, screen share and kind of take you through okay. now my button doesn't want to work the way it's supposed to you know how it always is Okay, so at this point, we're going to be going through the agenda for the top people. Uh, slideshow, resume, slideshow. Okay. No, there you go. Okay, so the, these are the top people that um, we've got today. So we've got a number of, so we've got Yolandi, um, Leanne, Jan, uh, Janet, Zia, Linda, Sue, Knox, uh, Candice, and Paul, and myself. Um, and then at the end, what we're going to be doing is having a Q&A so that you can ask your questions in the chat. Um, in the chat, we'll also be putting in the links um, to each person's uh, uh, LinkedIn uh, page so that you can connect with them personally um, if you're wanting to, you know, just network. So this is an opportunity for us to learn from each other. Um, and we're very excited for this. Okay, so... Introducing Yolandi. Now, this is a Dwemini, so a Reverend um, Yolandi, who's going to be sharing with us um, today. But um, this phenomenal woman, um, she runs, she's got kids, she's heading up a, a church, that, and in between lockdown, uh, moved houses. And, but from a personal perspective, it's someone I admire because. She's going against the grain of the typical um, stigma within, um, you know, certain places, uh, particularly in her environment, which is in a church environment. So welcome, Yolandi. I'm going to stop sharing now. And we're just going to see you. Hi. It's good to be here. Okay. So can I go? Really? Absolutely. You've cool. got the floor. Okay. So, um... It was a hard thing to limit uh, my advice to five minutes. I'm sure uh, most of us would agree. There's a lifetime of uh, lessons we've learned. But I've decided to just have one line um, of advice, and um, that is let your life speak. So um, it stems from something that's really interesting about my job. So in Stephen Covey's uh, Seven Habits, he starts the first habit with uh, being proactive. And there's an exercise where he says, think about your funeral. And what would you like people to say at the end of your life? And so a big part of my job is to do funerals. And uh, especially in wintertime. So I've had funerals for the last past week, like once a week. And then every time when I hear the eulogies, I'm so struck by the weight of life, of a person's life. And that every week uh, I just hear different stories. And the, this, this one line, it's a line of a book of Parker Palmer that wrote the book, Let Your Life Speak. 
then I'm always so in awe of how people's lives speak after they're gone, after they're not even here anymore. Uh, and so my advice would be to answer that question, what do you want your life to speak of? And the reason why I think that's important is because people will put their agenda and their script for your life onto you if you don't know what your own agenda and what your own why is. So you need to know what is the purpose that I am um, attaching my life to. What is the substance that I want my life to have? And so, so the, the first reason is so that other people won't put their agendas and scripts on you. But the second reason is that you don't lose yourself in your role. So I often um, am over um, enmeshed with my role as pastor or sometimes as mom. And um, this just invites me to remember that I am not my role. I'm just bringing me to my role. And that me is a very unique blend of uh, personality and talents and blind spots and whatever. So my advice today is just this, let your life speak. I love that. Thank you, Lundy. Um, as the next speaker comes in, um, and this is Lee, I think that um, from a perspective of, you know, even from where you're coming from, a lot of people talk about well about you afterwards, but when you actually have them around is kind of, you know, make sure that you're telling them that they, they matter while they're here, not because they're not going to be around forever. So I love that. Thank you very much. Um, as we the next speaker, phenomenal woman, Leanne Brown. Um, she, I first met her probably about four years ago when we did some LinkedIn training at the college. Um, she works at Chottle uh, Business College, and um, since then, she now leads the Chottle Business College, so um, stepped up and got promoted, and because she is such a phenomenal woman and such a humbled person, um, also gone through a lot during the last few years, and um, I know that we'll learn something particularly from her as well. So, welcome, Leanne. Do you want to put your Thank audio you. on? Thanks, Nolene. What a lovely introduction. Um, and thank you to you and your team for putting this together. I certainly feel very privileged to share this platform with these amazing women. And I must say, Yolandi, your ability to articulate a concept is impressive. You spoke beautifully, and I 100% agree with you. Um, so yeah, I'm grateful to be here today and to hear what everyone else has to share. It was also tough for me to pick some advice or to, you know, a story to tell. So I decided to pick three things. Um, and I think that advice is seasonal. So what I share with you today is what's on my mind currently and in my heart and the season that I'm going through at the moment. Um, because like everyone here will say, I'm, we've all learned so much, I'm sure. And to share, you know, only one thing um, is quite hard. But to start, so I'll share three things with you. The first one is balance. So balance is so important. And for me, that means balancing work and family, your studies, your ambition, your health. As you can hear, I've been a bit sick. So balance is certainly much easier said than done. Um, and I do understand that there's times of your life where certain areas need more attention and focus. There will be periods where work needs more hours of your day and night. And there will be times when family needs extra support or time. And that's okay. That doesn't mean that you're out of balance. It means you're prioritizing. So the ideal is to have a schedule and to, to find time for the things that are important to you in order to allow sustainability and to avoid burnout. So health, love, friends, hobbies, they all fuel creativity and they will add to your output in the workplace and they will help you to show up. So make time for the things that are important to you. Secondly, tied into balance is the ability to balance in the workplace in order to be 
both firm and kind. Business is business. Um, and often we take it personally when it's not. It's a job. It's work. Learn to take feedback, but also to give feedback that is firm and kind. And then lastly, my third bit of advice is to just have a strong support system around you. If, um, if I end with anything, it will be this, because I can even see from the attendees that my support system has shown up. So thank you, ladies, um, for joining. I really appreciate all of you. But honestly, if it wasn't for my parents, I wouldn't be where I am today. If I hadn't stood on the shoulders of giants and been willing to learn from them, if I hadn't had the support of my partner, my colleagues, you can see I'm getting emotional because it's important. Having that team in your corner is the be all and end all. So that is from me. You don't have to know everything and you don't have to do it alone. You can do it together. And I lost no lean in my emotional speak, <laughs> but that's all from me. <laughs> Thanks for all the hearts, guys. We really did lose Nolene, didn't we? Yeah, we did, but no worries. I can take over from here. Thank Great. you so Great. much, Lee, for sharing your story and for sharing your heart with us. We really appreciate your time. Um, next, we have another phenomenal woman joining us on stage, Janet Suter. Janet is an amazing business owner who also has a heart of gold. And I'm very much looking forward to hearing what you are going to share with us, Janet. Please take over the stage. Okay, hopefully I'm unmuted, thank you. Um, thank you so much. I also have a lot to say in five minutes. <laughs> it's very hard. Um, Please switch on your, your video. We can't see Oh you. my goodness gracious. <laughs> No, I can't put my video in because the host just stopped the video. Okay, there we go. Fantastic. Okay, so you could hear me. So also five minutes is a lot to say um, with all the experience. Um, so I've generalized mine, uh, but thank you to the panel mem members that have spoken so far. I really echo your words. Um, and thank you for getting so emotional. Um, you, you helped me get emotional while you were talking. <laughs> Um, so I started my career as a personal assistant at a very, very young age of 20, um, as that was the only job I could get at the time with no experience and just a small little diploma, only one at the time. Um, and I went on to various jobs in call center work, being an agent, waitressing, Girl Friday, runner. I did everything I could. And this led me to finding my footing, which eventually led into the discovery of my love for sales and for people. Um, being a driven person and very competitive, I found my passion in this area. I worked uh, on very long stints for corporates. And um, what I mean by long st stints is, um, this is actually a piece of advice, I never job hopped. No matter how tough things got or how it appeared or how tough it appeared, I would stick it out and I built those brands and products for those companies and I got really good at it. Um, so that they gave me all the experience I have today. Um, this led me to realize I had a passion for taking nothing and building something. So um, I not only loved building strong footprints for products and services um, and getting them out there, but I loved to hunt, uh, build a strong relationship and helping others realize their full potential um, uh, as well as customers and colleagues and making it happen. So if I had to speak to my younger self, I'd probably say the following. Keep hustling. Every day you're working toward your dream, even if you don't know what that dream looks like. It eventually will appear. Um, one moment, one introduction, one lesson, one decision can completely change the course of your life. Never, ever say no to an opportunity. Make new friends all the time because five years from now, those people you don't even know could be your best friend. Go out and help others achieve their dreams because one day you're going to need their help to achieve yours. 
you will not succeed by being like everybody else. You've got to succeed by doing things different. You are unique. You were perfectly formed in your mother's womb. Sure. I'm doing what the previous speaker did. <laughs> Trust your gut. Trust your intuition. If it's not a hell yes, then it's a no. Don't be afraid, afraid to change the course if your intu intuition is telling you something. It's those intuition decisions that change your life. Let go of the people that genuinely aren't happy to see you succeed. Let them go. It's not important. It has nothing to do with you. They're not happy themselves generally. Put horse blinders on and run your race. Look forward and run your race with victory because it's only your race. It's no one else's. Don't let negativity stunt your growth. I've never met a hater doing better in life than the person that they're hating on. Everything is going to make sense one day. So for now, laugh at your mistakes and keep going, keep going, keep going, and remind yourself that everything does happen for a reason. Remember to always see the bigger picture. Write more, photograph more, journalize, just journalize more. One day you could be, look back at those things and, and you could be a writer. Go and look at all your memories because you're going to forget them, I promise you. <laughs> You are created with a gift. Cherish it. Be the reason someone smiles today. Building up others around you and energizing them to be the best they can be. This will make you a happier person in the process of doing that without you even realizing it. So life doesn't give you lemons to make anything but lemonade. You have to go out and pick them yourself. Um, it's okay not to know what you're doing. Nobody does. If you're making a positive impact on other people's lives, you're on the right path. That feeling of climbing uphill and fighting for success against all odds, that doesn't ever go away. But don't worry, you'll learn to embrace it. You'll even learn to thrive on it. Then just in closing, take chances on people and never forget those who took chances on you. Don't settle for anything less than the extraordinary and take care of yourself. Wow. You know, I think it's literally where you're kind of going, okay, you've got five minutes and you've expressed yourself so well that the comment section is just blown up. Um, and that, you know, if it's not a hell yes, then it's a no kind of scenario is commented. And it's kind of making sure that you um, are being the best version of you at all times. So thank you, Janet, for sharing. Um, we really, really appreciate that you've taken the time and the, the, the words have been so powerful that the, the, everyone has loved exactly what you've said and kind of resonated with that. Thank you. It was a message we needed to hear. Okay, so on our platform, sorry, everybody. Um, I had a technical glitch that my whole computer froze. Um, but I do see that we have people from all around the world. There's New Zealand, Australia, Kenya. Um, like I'm, I'm, I'm so, I mean, it's probably like nighttime, like 11 o'clock at night in New Zealand or something. Um, so we're really privileged that you guys are actually in um, the session as well. So thank you. Um, the next speaker, so let me just uh, share the screen, is our beautiful Zia. Um, I met Zia, uh, Jan, you can turn your camera off. Thank you. Um, I met Zia through Chartal actually. So, um, when she was working with Chartal and doing the marketing from that side, we were working together on, um, the online learning content. And so that's how I met Zia. Zia is now sitting in Ireland. So she's actually, you know, doing our international representation, but is yes, very South African, 
Um, and, uh, you know, she's just absolutely phenomenal in term, terms of understanding what the markets and how to position strategy and marketing. Um, and that's why what, where she's working at the moment um, with inside a, a, an organization um, in Ireland. So over to you, Zia. Thank you, Nolene. And it's actually funny that you mentioned that I worked at Trottle because um, what I actually have to share has ties in so nicely with what Leanne said. And it uh, shows you kind of, we, we think alike. Um, but what I want to share is something that I honestly thought and I wish I had learned earlier because, um, as you know me, I have a lot of stuff going on at any given time. That's just what I do. It's how I am. Um, and I've noticed that, you know, life is full of expectations and whether it's these expectations that you put on yourself or expectations that others put on you, it gets stressful and living up to these expectations adds so much pressure to your life. Um, but now also add to the fact that you get this little dopamine kick whenever you meet expectations or you achieve your goals. Um, it just creates this negative, fantastic mixing pot for neglect. And the reason why I say neglect is because for me personally, whenever I'm focused on a goal or whenever I'm focused on achieving or meeting or exceeding expectations, I zone in on it and I focus on that. And I neglect everything else in my life to try and get that dopamine kick, but also to meet these expectations because you want to live up to them. You want to live, you want to do yourself proud as well. Um, and the, the message that we get as human beings nowadays is just, oh, no, just don't, don't live up to expectations. Don't worry about them. Just you do you. And while I agree with that, I'm not a very, um, I'm a very practical person. And I'm a person who I need steps to be able to change my behavior. And something that I found was very important and um, something that I found that helped me quite a lot is asking the question of what my non-negotiables are. Now, Non-negotiables, when you have a look at your wheel of life or the, the balance wheel, and I know uh, quite a few of us are familiar with it, um, but it's literally, it's made up of these sections of your life about what you find important and how you feel you are faring in these sections. So whether it's your spirituality, whether it's your health, your family, your knowledge, your studies, yourself, your career, you have these sections and you need to understand what's important for you within these sections. So what are your non-negotiables? What will you not negotiate on in these sections when pressure increases in another? And what helps a lot is to understand specifically, to, to put specifics to it. So for example, let's say I have a project at work, pressure is, the, the deadline is looming, pressure is building, and I realize I actually have to put in a few more hours than I thought to be able to meet the needs of the project and to check all the expectation boxes. So I need to know what in the other areas of my life I will not negotiate. Is it the dinners we have together as a family? Is it the stories I read to my kids before bed? Is it date night with my husband? Is it a, the cup of coffee we get once a week after dropping the kids? What will I not shift out to make space for this pressure? Because the pressure is gonna come. We can't avoid it, it's going to be there. But to be able to keep that balance that we need to be holistically happy, to be the people that we're supposed to be and the people that we were put on this earth to be, we need to understand where we can shift things around. So it also doesn't have to be family orientated. It could be, you know what, your health is very important to you. You will not move your daily gym session because you going for your morning run, it makes you who you are. It makes you happy. It gives you that energy to be able to put energy into something else. Um, and pressure doesn't necessarily have to come from work. We have family responsibilities. We have, we start a new course and assignments are looming or your exams are looming. And now instead of just focusing directly on studying and getting it done and neglecting everything else, you decide, you know what, you're going to do your morning runs, but you're going to negotiate on your Saturday yoga sessions. Because just for this period in answering and living up to these expectations and answering the stress and dealing with the stress of the increased pressure, you need to make, uh, the, you need to compromise in other areas. So as I said, stress is going to come, pressure is going to come. But for us to, I, I know for as a mom, you can feel like a failure so quickly because whenever you push your focus into something and you neglect everything else, you just feel like, oh my goodness, I'm not living up to 
anything else or the other expectations in the other areas of my life. So by understanding exactly what it is that you're not going to be compromising on when the pressure arrives, you are able to keep that balance that makes you whole and that makes you feel like you're actually doing well as a human being. I think that was a lot less than five minutes because I was talking very fast. But that is <laughs> one of the biggest lessons that I wish I had learned earlier in my life. That's so, and it's very true. I mean, even the, the, the comments are popping in saying, you know, you, you, you can't, uh, there are those non-negotiables and we come to work even as a whole person. We can't just leave behind, um, oh wait, you know, I'm busy. I just had a fight with my kids, just, you know, just like that and walk through the, the proverbial office doors and be 100% okay. So um, hence the reason why we need to make sure that we are having those non-negotiables, make sure that we are showing up in each one of those. Um, so, so thank you very much. Very important information for everyone. That, and it's really great information that you shared in advice. Thank you so much, uh, Zia. Yeah, so okay. next person um, that is in our lineup, let's go, is Linda. Now, Linda is a phenomenal, I mean, she's got uh, a wall next to her, her desk that um, if you want to come on video, Linda um, has, you know, awards to the wazoo. Stop me, I can't do, put my video on now. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, but has a phenomenal... Um, awards going, you know, international awards, local awards, has been in the industry that she's, you know, in the niche market, but also gone through um, a load, there you go, I see you now, um, gone through a load of, of information. We've worked together um, over 20 years ago um, in the same organization and now just someone that we work with and partner with in terms of elevating in the marketing space. So thank you, Linda, this is over to you. Thank you, Nolene, and thank you to everybody. Thank you to the team. Thank you for organizing. Thank you to all the entrepreneurial women that have taken the time to be here today and to share. And um, I think that that's the most important lesson that I've ever learned from women, is that women share. Every woman has a story. Uh, we uplift women. We're here to mentor other women. We're here to guide them and and give them the advice that they require, um, provided they're open to, to, as I say, share. COVID has taught us that no one can be pre prepared um, in, in the way because nobody knows what might be forthcoming. And the pandem pandemic has certainly confirmed that. We'll never do business in the same way as we did it before. People often ask me, what are your goals for your next three years? Or share your goals for the next five years. Um, and I say, you know, that might have been possible about five years ago. But right now, I think it's about agility and to think on your feet and to be able to adapt easily to change. Um, I'm part of the Women President's Organization, which is an accountability group. And if I can give anybody a, a, advice, it's that. Search for a group that's going to benefit and grow you emotionally, psychologically, physically, mentally. Find a mentor that you can look up to, respect, um, own, develop, and grow. And grow your space. Own your space. Focus. Um, on, on, on your purpose and who you want to become and who you are and what's the most important thing to you. A lot of the panelists have discussed things like balance. Um, I also feel that family is really, really important. So take the time out to sit around the table, communicate, insist that the TV's off and that the kids put away their cell phones. Focus on each other. Listen to each other. There's so much stress around and women are so challenged. And they expect it to man up. We're in a male-dominated environment. That's not going to change. Women need to wear many ha hats. I mean, from caregivers to nurses to wives to lovers to moms to you name it, businesswomen, business owners. We come up with new ideas. We create new platforms for new ideas. We uplift and help and guide other women. That's our purpose. So take time for your family. And in saying that, take time for yourself. Um, be kind to yourself. Um, and encourage, encourage yourself to explore more. Um, be part of accountability groups. The Women Presidents Organization is exactly that. So um, 
not not networking as such, although networking is great. Be with friends. Be with people that can challenge you. Um, we, as I said, you know, we we dependent on your line of business, which is changing all the time. There's still a lot of inequality with regard to earning potential in the boardrooms, irrespective of professions. We need to have a voice and we need to believe in ourselves and be true to our values and our ethics and our goals. And we will change the face of our environments. Um, we, need to, we need to be more, um, how do I put it? We, we need to be more flexible. We need to be more capable of listening to our teams and others. We need to, to, to keep focused on our end results and we need to take that time to believe in ourselves. And I think that that's the biggest purpose that women have in this world today. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for such awesome wisdom, um, Linda. Um, I think it's it's... It's so important to understand all the different aspects and from a business perspective and it was highlighted in the comments as well that mentorship is something that um, you really do need to be accountable to someone. So you have an accountability group called the Women's President Organization. So um, for those who are looking for those kinds of groups, I, just, I see someone's asked, um, but it's also about being accountable to someone in your team, um, being accountable to also to other people. So if you're in a small business and you're all by yourself or you're kind of just starting out in life and you don't know who to ask, you know, connect with people in those industries. What I've even said to my, my, my daughter is connect with people with it that if she wanted to become an architect or whatever it is, so that you start understanding in that, in that industry and start the process when you're younger. So absolutely, mentorship, I think we all would have made different choices if we had been um, listened to that advice from when we were younger. So thank you so much for that. Um, the next person we have up on stage is going to be a video up on stage. Um, she would love to have been here, but she's in a training session. So I am going to share and this is Sue and this is what she has to say. Uh, the video doesn't want to start. How awesome is the my technology today? Um, I think you forgot to share with sound. Okay. Sorry. Stop share. Share with sound. Yes, I didn't. Thank you, and Paul. I'm going to do it again. Start over. Okay, and play. Hello, it's such a pleasure to work with you. I have got three tips that I wish I had had shared with me and I'd learned a long time ago. The first one is, how do you show up? How well do you know yourself? What are your strengths? What are you really good at? What are your areas that you need to refine? What are the things that you don't know about yourself? For me, the better you know yourself, the more authentically you can show up. And that's my second tip. Be yourself. Be authentic. Be you. Do what is right for you and the world will actually accept you. There is nothing better than living your true real life. It also is about diversity and we need diversity in this world, diversity of thought, of personality, of race, color, etc. So be you. And then the last tip that I would like to share with you is be curious, keep learning, keep exploring, keep developing, keep on questioning things. Curiosity keeps you young Curiosity keeps you on the top of the mark when it comes to just finding out new things. Be curious about yourself, be curious about others, but be curious about the journey of life. I wish you all the best and thank you for this opportunity. Goodbye. Um, so this uh, particular, uh, Sue has, Sue and I actually met on an aeroplane. We don't talk to people. 
generally on an airplane, but we landed up working for the same um, organization previously, but didn't even know because we were in different departments. Um, but, you know, the, that whole journey of life and enjoying that journey and being curious, I sometimes, you know, uh, my team knows that I sometimes go into like these rabbit holes where if I want to know a, about something, and I think one of the recent rabbit holes I went down is about color blindness and going into an understanding so that you can incorporate um, those that are in the minority into whoever you are and how and keep learning. So thank you very much, Sue. Our next panelist is uh, Knox. And Knox is a phenomenal woman, um, a powerhouse all by herself. I mean, she studied to be um, biokineticist. Is it what, what bio something? I don't know, some brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, she's now run and, and she went into a totally different direction. So it's, it's talking to that, you know, I studied to be this, but now I'm that. Um, and running a, a successful uh, number of businesses, but, uh, you know, started off with running a marketing agency and doing really phenomenally well. So welcome, Knox, to the, to, to the team. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Nolene, for having us and for convening all these exceptional women. Um, it's really great to be um, refreshed in terms of what's important, um, what someone could have and should have probably taught us or what we could have learned earlier in our careers. So I'm really, really excited to, to join all the exceptional women that you have here. I'm hoping that I can do this in five minutes, like they all said. Um, so much to share, um, limited time. So I'm just gonna jump right in. So the first thing that I put on was um, how I obviously established all the businesses that I have, especially the first one. For me, um, when I look back, it's, it's um, in hindsight, the insight to pick from that um, is something that we probably all know, but just to highlight for someone who wants to start another business or still thinking of starting a business, is that everything that, that exists um, was once a thought. Um, and so don't um, disregard your thoughts. Don't um, think um, someone will think you are silly or being stupid for trying something new or coming up with something new. It all starts in your mind. The second thing I've actually dubbed my business journey as a, as a, as a faith journey. I totally believe in myself, but I also totally believe in the one who enables me, who gave me the gifts that I have, who created me, um, and, and certainly made me interested in the areas that I'm now serving in, the, those areas of interest is where I've thrived in business as well. So believe that you will be successful when you start a business, um, because the belief is exactly that. It is a creating um, something before it even exists, and that's faith where you say, I'm starting this business and I'm not gonna fail. I'm gonna make it a success. You've already made it successful. So all that you do every day is taking the necessary steps that elevate you to the next level, to the next level and to the next level. So never stop believing um, ladies. And so um, I guess in this culture of Instagram to stop scrolling and think, what can I create that will make this world a better place? And for women, that's actually our opportunity right there to start occupying spaces because we see things differently for men, we feel things differently for men, and we show up more emotively and more intuitively. And so we are the ones to shape the future that we want to see for our children. And um, the second one is about failure. And I know we all know all these quotes about failure, but it's really, for me, it was like, it hit hard in 20, 20, 2010. My business, um, I mean, I've never seen the amount of debt that I had in my life. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm being buried in debt. Um, if at that time I did not think this too, I will go through because pretty much everything that I have gone, um, I faced, I've been able to, to navigate myself and get to the other side, um, I would have probably, you know, allowed failure and debt to bury me. So very important is that you also apply the same thing. Think and affirm yourself that you will go through this, seek the help that you need and communicate because the more you talk about the challenges you're facing, obviously with a much more trusted council of people, not just everybody who's gonna blurt about what you're going through, um, you minimize the, the problems, you minimize the failure, you minimize the challenge and you become much greater and you're able to tackle it much better to get on top of it. 
And then the next one is um, the belief, I guess, a born to bloom. It's the book that I wrote, um, an e-book I wrote during lockdown. And it's something that I think when you're facing challenges and problems, um, I always refer to, remember that you were born to bloom. It speaks to our past speaker talking about keep being curious, keep blooming, keep nurturing yourself. And, and so when I say you keep blooming, is that we never arrive. Um, we, we, we elevate to the next level. We are um, on a journey of consistent and um, continuous growth. So it is about what can I do to improve myself? What can I do to take the business to the next level? What can I do to nurture this relationship? If you don't ask yourself the questions that enable you then to drive the growth, you're gonna be stagnant. And so Born to Bloom is about reminding ourselves you are an incredible seed. You are an incredible thought um, leader, someone who thinks innovative ideas. And so nurture them. Find people who are interested in what you are doing and, and nurture those things together. And then lastly, and Nolene knows I'm very passionate about building your personal brand because I build brands um, you know, across the, the board. Personal brand, um, service brands, and products, or company brands. Most importantly is what COVID has done it escalated the need to be online. We've always had websites, but what COVID has done is that we need to do business online. Um, you know, a friend of mine, Mzamo, who um, is in uh, Google SA or Google Africa, would say your business needs to be Googleable. So if your platform, your footprint on the digital platform and online is not strong, on LinkedIn, you know you've got to talk to, to Nolene. In all other platforms, you can talk to us, we can help you. I'm linked, I mean, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, wherever you need to take your business to. To be able to actually do business online, you need to build your brand. And that is about telling an, an authentic narrative and a story around yourself or your business, your value, what you're here to bring, and how you will change and impact people's lives differently because they engage with your business services or they engaged with you. It's all about telling your story. It's all about sharing what value you're here to share um, in this world. And it's about sharing your why and the purpose for your existence, the purpose for your business to exist, the purpose of why you exist, and make sure that that's what that keeps you going forward. So as a business owner or a career woman, know that we are here to just continue um, you know, elevating up. So keep blooming, keep flourishing, um, and pay it forward as you do that. Because as women, we should be about women for women, and uh, the future is now. And we say the future is female, so let's do it now. Thank you so much, Liz. <laughs> awesome. I love that the future is female. Um, but yes, I think um, what you have to say, and it talks about that we are, we do show up differently, and we should take ownership of showing up differently because um, women tend to be more empathetic to um, the world around them. And you you did mention that, so. Um, own it and feel it and help people through that journey. So thank you so much, um, Knox. We really appreciate it. Uh, the next speaker um, is Candice Hasty. So as we share, um, Candice is sitting in Howick, um, has had a B and B for many years, um, and you know moved and 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 translated that into. Uh, an organization that she's now um, helping others to build their businesses from a business coaching perspective. And, you know, Candice is this phenomenal, excited woman just for life. And so I'm really looking forward to hearing what Candice has to say and sharing with us today. So welcome, Candice. Thanks, Nolene. And thank you, everyone, for attending today. It's really awesome to be part of such an amazing group of women. Um, just love all the advice that everyone has been sharing. It's certainly, I think we're all on the same vein with Women's Month, where we are all about uplifting and sharing and developing each other and supporting each other with everything that goes on in the world around us. Because as women, we are the glue that holds everything together. We are mothers, we are sisters, we are daughters, we are wives, we are workers, we are boss ladies, we are out there doing everything um, and we're expected to just do it at any given moment looking after sick family members looking after kids education sorting out so many different things as well as our everyday jobs that we choose to do the thing that makes us happy so with that in mind the advice that 
I wish I had known is spend more time with yourself. Get to know yourself. Find out who you are as a person. I wish someone had said to me when I was younger that it's okay to spend time by yourself and to actually enjoy your own company. To be able to consider all the things that make me happy, to make plans for my own future that wasn't dependent on what the expectations were from other people. Um, at the end of the day, part of what everyone has mentioned is it's all about your why. So if your business um, is based on something, let it be authentic, let it be about you. If your goals for your future are based on something that everybody expected you to be and not who you authentically are, then it's a very, it's a very shaky foundation. So I wish someone had told me to spend more time getting to know who I am, what it is that I want, what it is that I stand for. Um, we spoke about boundaries earlier, the non-negotiables. Those are things that are critically important to creating the foundation for our whole future. Because when you're young, if you don't have those non-negotiables in place, then you are not going to be able to put up the boundaries when you need to or to say no. So it is not selfish and you are not crazy if you want to spend time getting to know who you are and what it is that's going to make you happy. That being said leads me to the second point and that is make a choice. When you have spent that time, when you have gone through a process, reevaluate it, a situation that's taught you something, reevaluate it and make a choice, make a stand on that event. Um, find out, you know, those are my boundaries. These are my non-negotiables. These are the things that I want. These are my goals and make choices about how you're going to get there and what you're going to um, need, the support, the money, the vehicle, et cetera, that you need to help you achieve those goals. And then lastly, and this is also, it's a big one. It's, I was told this a few years ago, and it's a case of, it's okay to change your mind. You might've made an, a choice and that was, you know, hindsight is always 2020 vision. If you made a choice at a certain time in your life to do something or to go in a certain direction, that's awesome. But if you find that that is no longer serving your purpose, it's no longer meeting your needs, that you're overstepping your own boundaries, that you're not meeting your own life balance, it's okay to change your decision. Rather, make a change, adjust your sales and sell in a new direction than to keep on living a life that is not serving your own purposes. So at the end of the day, you choose your life. Decide where you want to go and what you want to do. And um, as some of you have said before, pay it forward, support other women, help lift them up and give them an ear to, to um, listen and advice on how to spend time with themselves and get to know themselves. Because if you don't make choices and you don't live your own life, believe me, life carries on without you and life will be applied to you. So choose what boat you want to be in, choose where your destination is, set your sails and invite us along because we'd love to celebrate with you. Thanks everyone. Awesome. That was so amazing. So, you know, I love that most people are giving um, a similar theme and it's, it's about being authentic. So I, I think, you know, Brene Brown has some really great um, videos. If you guys want to just um, search Brene Brown on YouTube, she's got some brilliant TED Talks on um, you know, just being, um, how to not, you know, to be okay when, when it's not okay, to be okay with not being okay, um, authenticity and showing up, your, showing your vulnerability and saying I need help. And I think that's important and knowing yourself. I think a, a lot of us have gone through from school, from relationship to relationship to relationship. And I think one of those things that we, you know, we think that we're that person and we're that person, depending on who we're with. Um, and I think, you know, going through that and understanding yourself first and then getting into a relationship, you then know, and you can say no easier. The boundaries are easier because you are set in terms of understanding what you really need as a person. And so, yeah, thank you very much, Candice. This has been really great and I love it. So we're paying this forward as well. Um, then thank you so much. Next thank person. You.
introducing, and I'm very proud because um, she never thought that she was doing um, this kind of thing um, two, three years ago when she first joined my team. Um, this is in Paul. Um, she has, you know, she's very young, but also is very open to learning and growing consistently. So the, our whole team is, but, you know, Paul's kind of gone through that journey uh, just a little bit longer. So as I grew, then so the, the organization has grown. But Paul has some real good pearls of wisdom because she's even reaching out into the community for the uh, a woman's drive this month that um, even Janet is, is backing up um, and gotten, you know, the church involved in Janet. And, you know, because she's just so passionate about wanting to make a, make a difference that she's doing sanitary pads um, into primary schools so that are in her community because, you know, who, those girls, they need to go to school. So if you're missing out on school, it's a general woman thing. Um, mm -hmm. So if you do want to, to contribute, they are doing a, a handover on Friday, but it's also going to be a continuous project. So do connect with them for on that. So um, I hope I've done you justice, and Paul. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nadine, and good morning to everyone that took the time to join us today. I am so honored to be on the stage with these phenomenal, amazing women. I'm so inspired. Our lineup for today has been nothing short of amazing. And I'm just taking it all in and I'm inspired. And I really wish Women's Month could be like every month because I believe that women need to be celebrated every single day. Um, so today I've got just one piece of advice that I'm gonna break down into a few points. Um, and that is simply saying yes to more. Say yes to things that challenge the norm. Say yes to things that scare you. Say yes to things that you normally wouldn't do be because you know that um, you're scared or what if things go down or what if things don't go as much as, as you think they would. Say yes to learning more because the learning never stops, no matter the age, qualification or professional ranking. Always be open to learning and soaking up all the relevant information and knowledge that you are, are daily exposed to. And say yes to life and truly living your most authentic version with no regrets. Because I personally like to say that I don't have regrets and um, I'm not sorry about anything that I've experienced in the past or the decisions that I've made, because if it wasn't for those experiences, I wouldn't be sitting here today. So I'm very grateful and I'm very glad that I was able to say yes, and push myself through the fear. Another thing is to say yes to adding value. When the opportunity arises for you to add value in your workplace, at home, or even in a community, say yes to it. I think for me, the best decision that I've ever made this year or the, my biggest yes this year was when Nerlene just sparked an idea in my head and I just ran with it. And me saying yes to that idea and, and piece of advice, it had like a chain reaction that led to me starting my NPO today where we serve young girls in the community and just add value with heart as best as we can. And ever since I started saying yes more, I don't, I think, I don't think twice about things that scare me because I'm like, what, instead of falling, what if I fly? What if things work out? What's the worst that could happen? I think Nelly likes to say that. And again, if an opportunity comes to you for you to say yes, to things that may have a fruitful impact in your life, in the lives of the people or the things that you care about, then by all means, please say yes to more. Thank you. That's so amazing. Thank you so much, Paul. And, you know, I think that I've seen so much growth from a few years ago where I said to Paul when I was doing her first interview and then that when I first went, she first uh, was on, you know, contract, and then she came in 
um, full time. And literally a week into lockdown, she was an official employee. So, you know, it was, it was a hectic time. So we only got to meet up in person um, again, you know, because we obviously met a couple times before that, but meet up as a formal, you know, employee, um, probably months into to lockdown. But um, it's it's that same energy that um, that she runs with. So I know the next guest speaker. Oh, there it goes there goes the tears. You can't do that. <laughs> no, you can't. Because then you're going to have all of us going and um, going with that. But um, what in Paul? So I am the next guest speaker. So welcome, Nolene. Okay, awesome. welcome, Nolene. <laughs> <laughs> but. You know, in between, I've been giving little bits and adding in my piece, but I think Paul kind of touched on that and said, what is the biggest, um, you know, what is the, the one of those big advices is that, you know, I am, you know, a, a Christian, but it's also based on ask. So, and it's, and the translation is ask and keep on asking. It's not just ask. And then the you know, and the doors will be opened. It's ask and keep on asking. The moment, the timing might not be the right timing. So, if you had to ask me today to help you and do some sort, I would have said, "Oh, hell no!" Because this is very stressful. We've got you know, we ran we had ran two double events, um, as in you know, overlapping and you know the stress around that, but. Um, if you ask me next week, I'm probably in a better space and there's, the answer may be different. Um, but also, you need to ask, because what is the worst that you can get? What is the worst answer you can get? It's a no or a nothing, blue tick. You know, like my kids educated me a few years ago about blue ticking people. So now on WhatsApp, I, I've removed the blue tick function and that nobody can see that, you know, when I was last online or blue can blue tick someone because some people actually do take it personally. So ask and the worst possibility is a no. Um, I think I even in, in a meeting that we had with Linda yesterday was, you know, asking is that um, the, you've really got those relationships. You've already got some some people that um, are phenomenal women around you um, and people ask for help. I think that's the second one I want to just and you know uh, from the ask is what's the worst they can say is but one of the hardest things I ever had to do was ask for help because you get raised in an environment where. It's not okay to be not okay. It's you're not allowed crying. Um, you know, the, the the father generation of that time didn't know how to handle a crying little girl, so you weren't allowed to cry. Um, but that asking for help, what I had to do it, um, you know, like a real humble ask probably about 10 years ago for the first real time that I started that personal journey of, of asking for help. And I wish I'd done it earlier, but the response, once I'd asked for help in a specific situation, you know, people are ready to aren't, and there's no questions. There's no, okay, so why do you need help? It's, it was an actual, and the, the, the response was so overwhelming that it taught me that, you know, you, you're not the perfect person. You're not all that everything ask for help you've got people around you that are best at xyz so i studied so my third third point then is goes into i studied to be a, a bookkeeper and yes uh i now outsource my bookkeeping and <laughs> we were running in a, a marketing agency but i didn't find my passion at a younger age because i had listened to what everybody else was saying what i should become um, and now I just, you know, do invoices and pay people and stuff, but I don't do the actual bookkeeping. Um, I have a bookkeeper for that, um, an accounting firm that manages that process because it's not what I'm best at and find while you're young, what you're best at, what you're passionate about and start it as a side hustle, start it as, 
is something. And if it's not a side hustle because you don't have a job, then start it. Start that initiation. I mean, there's women in here that, that can help you in every part of the process. And that personal branding um, is, is really amazing. So I think I'm going to put that off for now um, and just wanting to see what um, questions we have for the panel. So if the panel wants to kind of come back into the um, to the full view of everybody, whoever's remaining. Um, do we have any specific questions? I know there was um, loads of comments, um, but you know maybe there's some last thoughts as you guys want to. So just kind of like say, hey, I want to, I want to talk. Is there someone who wants to add to something while we're waiting for questions? Uh, no, Nalini, I'd just like to, if I can, I yeah. comment. Yeah. Um, I just really want to um, just um, say, wow, <laughs> every single one of um, the speakers today just had such great advice. Um, and I'm sure we've all reiterated this. We had so much more to say, um, but in five minutes, you've got, you know, so, um, you know, things that stood out for me that I wanted to say was the mentorship side. And there were so many just pearls uh, and gems that came out today. Um, I, I'm just so impressed with how everybody spoke from the heart. Um, and I was just saying to, um, I especially had my hair colored for today, by the way. Um, and uh, I was just saying to my hairdresser about the the woman the the woman's drive that Mpo and I and many others are involved in, and we're doing the drop off on Friday. And I was talking about it, and boom, the tears come. And I said, "Why did God bless me with being a crybaby? Why can't I just laugh about everything? I do laugh, and I love laughing, but when I speak from the heart." Boom, the tears come, and I, it's not one of my favorite things, by the way, but it just happens. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Knox, uh, Knox has something. Yeah, part of us being, I guess, um, much more emotionally in, and intuitive, um, we are emotionally wired. And at some point, a, a gentleman who was my mentor, um, a CEO of a big company, um, would say, Knox, you're very emotional. You know, you know, some people like will just switch off because you just get in there with emotion. I'm like, that's my gift, my passion, my emotion. If I'm going to block that, then I'm disregarding a certain part of me. And so Janet, I, I, I saw a comment earlier on, there was a few tears here because we get emotional about the journey we've been on, the people who've been there for us. Um, and when we think of what we've gone through and broken through um, as women, that's just something we we can't take away from us and it, it's what sets us apart from our male counterparts and i just wanted to highlight a little thing that you also mentioned um jenna just to discuss i guess that we do need a man i love my husband i love his support he always cheers for me i'm raising a, a girl and a boy um and so as much as i advocate for women because we know Honestly, we are nowhere in these boardrooms. Um, you know, the percentage is still shocking um, when you think about how f many decades we've spoken about gender equality. Um, and yet, the, 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 the women are not there. And it's not only women that are probably not rising to the space, it's also because those who hold the power don't want to let go of the power. And so if we rally together and, and, and hold support each other to get into these boards, to elevate and get to the next level, like Nolene and Paul, grow and nurture women, it doesn't mean that we disregard the role that men play in our lives. It just means my number one mission is to ensure that we do shift the dial when it comes to gender equality. Um, and that is why we're having this kind of discussion here, learning from each other as women, but also not forgetting um, yes, we, we want to build, obviously, a diverse unit um, in our homes, in our community, and, and let both genders um, show up um, as excellently as God created us all to be. Yeah. Absolutely. Is there somebody else that wants to add into that? There. I'd like to. Thanks, Charles. I think it's actually about being real. Um, which is exactly what Janet said and you too, Knox. Just, you know, just be yourself, be real. When it comes to male-dominated environments, I don't think we need to wait for a death and a resurrection. I think we need to get out there and collaborate with like-minded women and start our own businesses and go in our own directions and, and mentor other women and uplift them and, and bring them aboard, you know. I think it's, it's, it's more about that. 
um, being the country that we are, I don't think we're going to see too much change too quickly. So I, I think that that would be definitely the way to go. And starting a business is hard. Um, we're all in business. We've all started businesses. Nobody can say that it's easy and it's never going to be. So, so pick up the challenge and just collaborate with women that can, can actually add value to your life. Sure. Absolutely. Um, there you go. And Paul wants to say something. Right. Um, Linda, there was actually a question for you. Um, it came from your Lisa saying, I feel like um, women are over mentored and less supported. So how can we possibly shift that? Over mentored and over supported. Perhaps what needs to happen is she needs to actually move out of the group that she's feeling that kind of pressure from. It could be a team. Um, I would suggest once again, look at other platforms and look at look at the growth and the value that you will get from other groups of women in other industry types and other environments. You need to learn and you need to grow. You can't be around a team where you're actually doing the same thing all the time. Um, and that could possibly, I hope I haven't misinterpreted it, being, being your, your feeling of frustration possibly. Yeah, That's I think that does speak to that because I think, um, and I don't, I, I know that men. I mean, literally, one of one of them, the, the clients was late for a meeting yesterday because he was on the golf course. You know, um, men have those networking opportunities where they go and play golf and they go and, but then if women have a spa day together, it's kind of frowned upon. And I think but that should be the norm, right? Because that's where we um, land up chatting and having those conversations. And, 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 you know, some people do business within that space as well, just like the men on the golf course. If we don't like golf, we don't have to be on the golf course. You know, we can change that paradigm by changing our own networking, um, who we're networking with. And, you know, there's that one saying that says, if you're the smartest in the room, change your room. So, you know, move to another room. Um, but yeah, so anyone else? I'd like to add what to something to what Nolene said. Um, when you said about you're too scared to ask for help and then you end up not asking for help. There was something that I read actually is when you do that, you already made the decision for other people that they don't want to help you. You put that decision on them because in your head, you realize that, okay, they don't want to help me, which is very unfair. It's unfair because that could be their love language. That could be the way that they express or feel that they're supporting someone else. Or it, it could be something that makes them more of a holistic person and helps them to feel better about who they are as well. So in instead of going or thinking that we, I should have the courage to ask for help, say you're doing it on behalf of someone else. You're giving someone else the opportunity to be who they are, to be their authentic selves. I love that, that you're going into the love languages because, um, you know, if you just do a search, so whoever's watching still, um, if you do a search on love languages, you can, um, there's a, a free, there's loads of free little um, questionnaires to find out and identify your specific love languages. But find out the love language of your team, find out the love language of yourself, because it, it goes back to what Candice was saying is knowing yourself and spending time with yourself. Because if your love language is quality time and you're not getting that from um, the people around you because they're always on their phones or whatever it is, it's your own fault because you need to know and say to them, this is how I show up. So I need you to show up in the same way because that's how I feel. That's how I get the love felt from your side. Um, so yes, definitely. I love that. Anybody else for some last? I know there's lots of comments saying you guys are awesome and phenomenal. I'll send you guys the chats um, at the end so you can just read and, and see um, how much this was possibly needed for so many people um, from a context perspective. I just want to say one thing. Sorry, Nils. Um, talking about a love language. It's all good and well to have your own love language. You spoke about finding out the love language of your team. Um, I think what one also has to understand that people that are close to you, not necessarily your team as such, but perhaps people in your life, it could be your family, it could be your, your, your partner, okay, you're not, never going to change that person. So I think, I think you have to start accepting 
who they are. And it's always going to be a different kind of love language. So you're never really going to find exactly what it is that you're looking for. But it's a level of acceptance as well of another human being and who they are and what they are and respecting them for who they are and what they are. So Linda, I'd like to add to that. So, um, and I want to be really, really vulnerable here is, um, you know, those of us who have been in relationships or planning to or in marriages. So, um, Horses. yeah, <laughs> um, my husband and I, uh, I have a gifting of, and I enjoy it. One of the giftings I have, and I believe that's through my creator is, and the way I understand him is I have a gift to teach and I love teaching. So I'm forever correcting. And the way he views it is, stop telling me what to do. Hmm. And he gets angry and frustrated and whatever, whatever, whatever. And it perpetuates into this, what we all know is the snowball effect. And I had a conversation with him and I said to him, celebrate my gifting. View it through a different look. If you view it as what God has gifted me with, you might not find yourself so frustrated all the time. And again, it's that love language and the way we view things. The other person is feeling criticized and I feel like I'm helping. And when I explained it to him and I said to him, you know, it depends what you believe. Okay. I'm not forcing mine on everybody else here, but God created me as the help meet, not lesser, but a helper. So if he views that a little bit differently, and when I shared that with him in a lovable way, he was like, okay, I'll celebrate this gifting instead of feeling like he's, I'm, I'm a, you know what I'm saying? Attacking attacking him I just said to him don't feel like I'm attacking you I'm trying to help you I'm a natural teacher I can't stop myself it just happens I think as we're bringing up children and helping people we automatically even in a caring role um uh, and a disciplinary role we we kind of may come across as possibly being quite patronizing at times um which is actually which is actually most unfair. So so then it's taken in the wrong way because of the sensitivity levels. So what happens is then you you actually shut down because you've been fed so much during the day that you don't really need any more from them, if you know what I'm trying to say. You've 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 done your bit. Um so so if they're open to allowing us to be who we feel we want to be at that time they will get a much better result. Um, mm. It's mm. very difficult, Janet, because sometimes it's exhausting. It is. It's better just to go and light a candle and sit with a glass of wine than to try <laughs> because I promise you. <laughs> just of like, I'm out of this. I just want to have a good meal and I want to relax. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, some of the ladies have to leave now. So um, I want you to just close it up and just say, Really, thank you so much. You have. I see Knox wants to say two set two things there. I can see. I was going to. I want to connect with Linda. I didn't see her LinkedIn um, handle or LinkedIn um, link, but if if you can't put it here, I know Lolin will connect us. I, I, I think I think everyone who shared a LinkedIn um, link and I've connected. Um, yeah, we'll connect then. I love the lighter kettle and super glass of wine. <laughs> I'd love to have <laughs> I'm in the full ways area. I'm available. But what I'd like to say is I'm, I'm only connected to the hosts and the panelists. So sorry, I haven't been able to share anything ah, with anybody. Okay. So I don't know why I have this set up. It's obviously something I started with Zoom over COVID because I haven't changed anything. So if you wouldn't mind sharing for me, please, Noel, so that I'd really like to connect with everybody. Absolutely. So, um, well, I'll send it in the group. Where each one of us can just send our links in there. But thank you very, very much. Um, thank you for taking the time out. Thank you for sharing your pearls of wisdom, um, you know, crying, laughing, and just enjoying one another's um, is important. And maybe we can do this on a quarterly basis where we get women around the table kind of just sharing, you know, what's going on and, and their pieces of advice, you know, because life could change in the next three months. Um, I mean, it really has. I mean, changes, you know, every hour. 
<laughs> depending on if you have a, a, a matriculant at the moment, um, it can change every mm. five minutes, depending on the household situation like I've got right now. So, you know, that mood on the stress factors. So um, yeah, thank you very much, ladies. We really appreciate it. Connect with everybody. Um, and thank you for all of those that took the time to attend. And we really appreciate um, the feedback that we've received and connect with us, share with us. Um, we do also have a LinkedIn, so I have to do a little bit of a punt, uh, branding. Um, we do have a LinkedIn um, event coming up in two weeks' time, so um, at a special cost, uh, the 9th of September. So if you want, you can connect with us, um, with either and Paul or myself, to get more information. Um, other than that, you know, that's literally just to kind of help with your personal branding, help with your business helping understand how you can actually utilize um, LinkedIn effectively because ultimately everybody here is here because mostly because of LinkedIn. So, um, and the connection. So it, it, this is the power of, of utilizing a network effectively rather than just having it there for the sake of having it. So thank you everybody. Um, and I hope you guys have taken pictures. Have you taken your snips and your pictures? I know Knox loves doing that. Um, she she, even while, we, while I'm meeting with her in person, she takes videos of me talking. <laughs> oh, that's so, excellent, Knox. I'm pleased because every time I want a, a video, Nolene hasn't got any. So I'm pleased that you do. <laughs> awesome. I've got when it comes to content, don't stress, sorted. Awesome. <laughs> excellent. Are you going to share the chats with us, Knox? Yes, I'll share the chats as well. Awesome. Okay, Thank you so much, ladies. Have a fantastic and phenomenal day. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.